I am delighted to introduce um, our interviewee for this afternoon. I'm joined by Chandi Ghosh, who is the uh, Chief Operating Officer and General Manager at Intelliquent. Chandi, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me on board. So let's kind of just start at the top. You know, we're, we're obviously speaking today um, about, you know, the kind of DNI conversation in your work in the space. Why don't you tell us a bit more about the work you've done towards gender, gender parity in the kind of telco and tech sector? Yeah, uh, this is a topic um, that's uh, very near and dear to my heart, you know, for the past few decades. And, you know, in general, telecom and tech, I've always been mentoring women in tech. Um, you know, we've had such few women who, when I was, uh, you know, starting my career, there was such few women in telco and tech. Mm -hmm. And we've made major strides. We've offered incentives like flex hours, female mentors, um, seeing more women in leadership, maternity benefits, training opportunities, etc. But you know, over the past five years, I have now specialized in 911 telco and tech. Mm -hmm. And a couple of months in, I noticed that women in 911 tech were even a rarer breed. So I began looking into the reasons behind this inequity. And then I founded this um, uh, alliance under NINA, which is the North America's National Emergency Number Organization. Um, and it's called WIN, Women in 911. So I'm now a co-chair on that. It's basically a safe place for women in the community to come together so that I can give back to this community. So let me give you a very simple example of you know, how we're making strides now at for women in 911. Mm -hmm. I led a win session at a very popular conference we had here called uh, Nina's Standards and Best Practices. Practices. So what happens is this organization, this conference, and these people who are on these standards bodies actually define what goes on in 911 around the country, around North America. So, um, and it was very clear that there were almost no women on any of the panels. Uh, there were no very few women on the standards bodies. So. We had this win session in the evening, and I challenged them with that question, saying, you know, this is so important for your own careers to be on standards bodies, to define what the next generation of improvements were going to be, and asking them why they weren't volunteering for these uh, positions. The eye-opening answer to me was that they were intimidated by all these knowledgeable men mm -hmm. who were so overpowering and that they would feel scared to be part of this. So we brainstormed solutions and we came up with the, the simple you know, answer, which is let's have a welcome session when a woman uh, wants to join a standards body, assign them a mentor who would guide them and give them a voice up front until they felt comfortable to do it on their own. You know, this is such a simple solution to a problem. And unless we take that time to understand what the real issues are behind this lack of female participation, we can't address it. So, you know, here we are now, we have women on these panels and standards boards. And, you know, it's it's imperative on us as women leaders to move these things forward. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm in com complete agreement with you. Um, I think you have to acknowledge the problem in order to fix the problem. So um, complete agreement there. Um, I mean, if we if we look back then to kind of like 2019, you know, with the launch of this particular initiative, which we have at, at, at Capacity, which is the Global Women in Telco and Tech Awards, you were, of course, the winner of our best women, in, best woman, sorry, in wholesale telecoms, you know, without kind of wanting to toot your own horn here, you know, what did what did that mean for you? I mean, the, the event itself was great, but, you know, what was the significance of, of winning that for, for yourself? Um, it was such an honor, first off, you know, to win the award. You know, Capacity Media has been the acknowledged global media company for telecom, and your know, events have been of such high caliber. Mm -hmm. I was just happy to be in London speaking on the panel regarding women in telco and tech and women on boards and all the things that I like talking about. Um, and to be selected as one of the top five was exciting with, uh, you know, some of the biggest reputable companies that are that can move the needle, like Facebook, Amazon, AT&T, everybody at the table. Mm -hmm. So that gala itself was brilliant. I made some fantastic connections and networks. Winning the award was icing on the cake because now it was giving me an international platform 
to make these same changes that we need to see in the world. I do a lot in North America, as you can uh, imagine. Mm -hmm. And now this uh, pla this gave me a platform to um, go international. Even in 911 now, I'm doing a whole lot of international work. But it is important. This is not a... Uh, you know, just my part of the world needs to improve. It is something that we need to do for women everywhere. So it just um, was a, a phenomenal opportunity for me. So absolutely. thank you to Capacity Media. And absolutely. Media. Yeah, absolutely. And and just, you know, for anybody who, who wasn't there in attendance, what I particularly loved about that particular event, the entire day, the awards and the summit was that we had a real international feel. You know, we had a lot of people from Africa and Asia, as well as, you know, the, the Europe's and the, the North America represented, which is always a great thing. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. And so see, everyone has the same problems. So yeah. it isn't, so these issues are global, and if we can help any part of the world improve, it's something that we've accomplished. Yeah, it's very telling. You're you're right when it's the same story across the board. Um, okay, so if we switch gears then a little bit back to you then, Chandi, specifically in terms of you know your journey, you know I I never want you know <laughs> to, to seem negative in terms of my questioning, but you know what were some of the kind of the, the challenges that you face as a woman in this space, and more importantly, how did you overcome them? So in my early career, this was the early nineties. Mm -hmm. um, there were such few women in telco and tech, and I started my career in telco and tech. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, I was a minority. I was a foreign student with an accent. So I had, you know, all three strikes <laughs> and faced a ton of adversity. Um, mm -hmm. But you know what? I was extremely hardworking and I realized, you know, you've got to work harder to prove yourself. Um, got all my high annual ratings, uh, which, you know, in my earlier career did translate into promotions, but I hit the proverbial glass ceiling as a director and just could not move beyond that. Um, and then I had to look for other opportunities to be able to climb that ladder. So my first career actually lasted me 15 years of my life. And then the realization that, you know, loyalty is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Then since then, instead of playing the victim role, I took matters into my own hands to pursue my own growth goals. I started planning and putting the right moves into each step of my career to get to where I want to be. So that is very key. You know, um, it's so easy for people to say, well, it didn't happen because this happened to me. Uh, what are you doing about it and taking charge to make that change is, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that I would caution most people. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do think you have to kind of be proactive about your own progress and success. Um, so I, I agree with you there. Um, without kind of wanting to to, to keep, give you a kind of a, a crystal ball and, you know, control over an entire sector, what do you think, in your opinion, needs to happen in the industry at large to kind of bridge the the kind of gender gap? I mean, there's a lot of work being done, but every, you know, what I hear when I speak to everybody is that there's so much more to be done. You know, do you think there is anything in particular that needs to be done, you know, to make this happen and happen faster? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously lots of strides have been made since <laughs> I started my career. Um, <laughs> But we still don't have too many women at the senior most levels. If you look at the number of C-level uh, folks at the, and lot, fortunately, there are lots of women who are starting their businesses and are, um, you know, C-level in their organizations. But if you still look at the the big names, um, there is still not as many women CEOs, et cetera, in these organizations. So it's that if you can see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. um, those kind of things to attract younger women into the industry, um, that's still lacking. And, you know, women on boards to be able to change a lot of the, um, you know, policies and practices that are, that are required, the flexibility, the equal pay, uh, diversity to uh, reflect the company's uh, customer base. You know, there there's a huge big segment of uh, women that we can recruit from, right? Mm -hmm. um, all consideration for attracting more women, you know, measuring KPIs, metrics, and providing the right mentoring to be able to focus on these steady improvements. And it's not just mentors. You know, I speak about this a lot. You know, um, there's a difference between mentors and sponsors. Uh, a mentor just helps you on your journey, guiding you in the right direction. A sponsor is somebody who will walk with you on your journey and to make sure 
that you are being given the right opportunities by connecting you to their networks to put you in places, et cetera, that will grow your career. That's you know one step ahead of being a mentor. So those kind of things, if we can make that happen, um, that will really make a big difference for uh, bringing more women into more of the leadership positions, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I especially agree with the, you know, that the idea that representation matters, you know, I think people really kind of underestimate how much you have to see something in order to know that you can, you can attain it, you know, it's reachable. Um, okay, so then my last question for you then, Chandi, what single piece of advice would you give a young woman who kind of wants to do what you've done and reach the top of their kind of career and, and really kind of make a name for themselves in this sector? So I would say a couple, uh, just a couple of things. One is plan your career. If you feel you're not accomplishing what you deserve, you should course correct. Um, and this may be in the form of giving yourself a little more time, seeking other opportunities, learning new skills and retooling that will get you there. Uh, you know, I'm a prime example of one never too old to learn and grow. In my late career, I've now built a differentiator, a very important aspect in 911 to extend my competencies don't be afraid of taking those risks you know i was always a cio over the past you know 15 years i've been a cio and this is the first step i've taken into being a chief operating officer of emergency services it was intimidating at first but you know hard work pays off risks pay off so take that step and of course my last point network 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 you will always need uh, mentors, sponsors, et cetera, in your life. Absolutely. It's the, the kind of age old networking um, advice it still rings true. So good to hear. Well, listen, Tandy, that, as I mentioned, that was my last question. Thank you so much again for, for joining us for the for the podcast. Um, I think you've given us some invaluable insights um, as to why this is such an important subject. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Natalie. No problem. And Joe, back to you.